All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Cam. We are here in Morristown, New Jersey, once again with Kim Cawthorn of Carmen by Kim. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to have you here. So um, this is a little bit unique type of episode that we've done. We haven't done uh, like a mobile kind of online business yet, um, but it's cool. Like I'm excited. And we're talking about fashion, which obviously that's something that I am very well aware of, you know, big time Love fashion the guy. the sweatshirt hat combo vibe. Yeah. It's just like black's very slimming and yes. that's why I, you know, wear a lot of black. So, um, but really excited to kind of talk to you because there's, you know, a lot of colors popping over here and it's like something that I'm going to learn a lot about hopefully over the course of the day. Um, so let's kind of do like a little bit of a background about you. So you originally from New Jersey? Yeah. So I'm originally from Livingston, New Jersey. I love New Jersey. Um, and so when I was growing up, I was always super hyper, like ADHD child. Like I would always be all over the place and very imaginative. Yeah. Um, and my teachers were always very concerned about me. Um, but I was always like playing pretend. And so like by the time it came time in high school to start looking at colleges, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just really knew that I wanted to do something creative. Yeah. Um, and I had taken classes at FIT in photography and fashion illustration. And so I decided like, well, I like fashion. I like photography too, but for some reason in my mind, I thought maybe fashion would, I'd be able to go further with it. Yeah. So, um, I decided to do that. I started working at a store in high school called Guess, was at the mall. I learned a lot um, in like customer service and floor sets and yeah. like quality and stuff. Um, I really, really enjoyed working there. I worked there like into high school, I mean into college. Um, and so when I decided to go to college, I went to Centenary College and it was out in West Jersey. Yeah. And I soon started to realize I was like outgrowing that. like. I was always trying to do different things um, in my college courses, and I was always told, like, you can't do that. This is too outrageous. Um, that's not what the curriculum is. And so... Like, I, what were you trying to do? Like, stuff like you are just talking about? Like, like, creative fashion type stuff or something totally different? Even things like during the fashion show. Like, I'd want to do something outrageous during my walk in the fashion show, and I'd be told, like, no, you're not allowed to do that. Like, you're not Alexander McQueen. But, I mean, Alexander McQueen became Alexander McQueen because he did outrageous things. Yeah. So I just felt like I was stuck in this, like, little square box there, and I needed something to kind of um, allow me to grow more. So I left there, and I started going to Montclair State, and I was also working at a bridal designer at that point and like exploring Manhattan and um, having meetings with different fabric suppliers or like getting in touch with factories overseas or just getting to explore the city in that sense and make all these connections really allowed me to have all these doors opened and have a lot of knowledge in my back pocket. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like, take me through kind of, like, as you're progressing through this, like, when you were at Montclair State, it's very interesting to me because, like, I've heard that before, too, like, in some of the creative endeavors that I've done. It's like, I don't know, like, you can't do that. But, like, anytime someone tries to, like, be a trailblazer, I guess, for lack of a better word, not that I'm one, but just, like, when you're doing something, like, it's, like, a little bit different, people are like, oh, no, 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 like, don't do not do yeah, that. Yeah. Especially, like, in a creative field, like, what's what's stopping you? You know right. What I mean? like what's, what's the point of what's the point of putting the lid on the creativity yeah. rather than just kind of like letting it out? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was really difficult for me, especially being in fashion. I mean, even things like how to design a garment or how to um, sew something it was very restrictive. And like I've realized that, especially in fashion, you learn way more on the job than you do in college. Yeah. And if I knew then what I knew now. Um, I mean, I'd probably be in an even bigger direction, but again, you absorb all these things, like, as you keep going, like, and everything I've ever done, like, I always keep a notebook with me, and I mean, obviously in class, but in work, too, every job I've ever had, I keep a notebook, and I write down, like, you know, what I'm learning, like, factories, connections I'm making, and I keep every notebook with me, because, like, that's what's given me all the ability to do what I want to now. Yeah, right, exactly. So let's, go, let's keep going with the, the career path, I guess. So you started at Guess, right? Yeah. Then the bridal store. 
So I was working for a bridal designer. Bridal was, designer. Yes. It was a store too, but yeah, yeah. it was the flagship store, but she sells them all over. Okay. So I was a design and product development assistant. First, I was an intern. Then they wanted to hire me, but I was still in school. So I just became like a part-time assistant yep. and I would go a couple times a week. Then um, they wanted me to learn more about the business. So I became a bridal consultant as well on the weekends. Um, and I did learn a lot. I mean, bridal is crazy. It's a lot of fun. It's super rewarding. Yeah. Um, but it gave me a lot of tools and knowledge for what I do now. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, it was a lot of work. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But I learned so much. Um, and that's one of the jobs I can say that, like, I learned a lot on the job. I mean, and, you know, when you're an intern, you're doing kind of, like, bitch work. Like, you're, like, <laughs> running around the city. Like, you're not taking Ubers. Like, yeah. I'd be, it'd be, like, 90-something degrees in Manhattan, and I'm, like, running up and down, like... 28th Street, like, you know, looking for a specific kind of bead that we need for this. Yeah. And, like, we can't find it anywhere. And, you know, I mean, but it was, that's what you have to do yeah. to learn to get to the point you're at. And so, like, also, I feel like I have a lot to offer to, for someone to learn. I mean, at that point, I was a sponge, and yeah. I'm still very much a sponge. Like, sure. I love to learn new things and that's one of the things I miss about college like I love just like raising my hand and having conversation with the professor yeah but I do feel like it's so important for people that are in any industry but specifically something creative like just be a sponge do the bitch work like you know what I mean like that's how you're gonna learn yeah and I'd meet people doing this bitch work right that I'd make connections getting with. out there like being visible yeah you know, what I mean? you like, know they'd big. say oh what are you looking for oh where do you work oh you know I have an opportunity if you want to come here you know yeah. like that's how you make other connections too yeah and so what uh what did you do beyond that was that like the last job you had before starting this no so then after i was there i was a colorist which a lot of people like don't know what a yeah colorist what's a colorist is. i didn't really know what it was so it's someone who basically is taking um like all the components of a garment and making sure that all the colors are matching under the same light source. And it's something that like you can kind of train your eye, but you also can't, you're either born with it or you're not because you have to have the ability to um, see these colors. So, I mean, if you don't have that in your eyes, then you're not going to be able to. Yeah. So I didn't really know what it was, but I heard of this Munsell color test that I had to take. And it's basically three different hues and you have to put them in order from like one color to the other. Um, and I took it and I got everything right. <laughs> oh, so you're like a savant of, yeah, and of my, colors. And the woman who became my boss was like, I have never seen that in my life. <laughs> you're hired. And yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, that was also, but you know, like I wouldn't have gotten to that job if I didn't have the job that I did at the bridal place because when I was there, I did a lot of like lab dips, like literally in the kitchen of the office, different amounts of dye in little tiny cups, testing each one. And then that's what we would send to the factory, whichever one they liked. Yeah. Make sure that it's this exact color swatch. Right. So that trained me to that job, you know? Yeah. And then after that job, I started working at a sleepwear intimates loungewear company, um, which I actually still work there. Okay. So it's like doing two things at once, yeah. which is I'm always going, 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 but I honestly don't know what I did before I was going, going, going. Yeah. So I've, what I find interesting about that is kind of like as you're progressing and doing all these different things over the course of your you know, career and then, you know, still doing that and then starting Garment by Kim. Um, and we'll, we'll tell the people what Garment by Kim is in a second, but like, are you trying to figure out like over the course of this career, like what you're going to do in fashion? Like, are you going to design your own clothes? Are you going to do, you know, whatever you're doing now? Um, does that like come into play or is it still just kind of like a totally open type thing? So, um, I always knew I wanted to open my own store. Yeah. I determined that, like, in high school, like, I knew I wanted to open a store. It was just when, you yeah. know? Um, and again, like, I absorbed all that knowledge that I felt like I was able to do this now. Um, I had been saving for quite a few years to start this, but to open a brick and mortar. But as I was researching, like, what I needed to do to prepare for that, I wasn't planning on starting this yet. Yeah. 
I realized that I really did have all the basic knowledge and then some to start it now if I wanted to. Yeah. And then with the encouragement of like friends of mine and some family too, um, I thought, why not just start online first? I wasn't even thinking mobile yet. Yeah. I was thinking just online um, and start really small with just a couple pieces. So I was like, let me just start. And I started off with headbands. Just selling headbands to my friends, okay. buying headbands and selling them. Yeah. And that went on for like two months. And then I was like, all right, it's time. It worked. It's time to move on to bigger and better things. Yeah. So um, then oh, other friends I had that worked at different local businesses, they were like, you can come and do a pop up here. And from there, it really got the ball rolling. So um, doing pop ups has really been helpful to figure out like when the time comes of when I want to open a brick and mortar yeah where I would want to because by doing these pop-ups I get to like see all these different communities see what the clientele is like right see if there's other competing stores because I also don't want to like step on anyone's toes sure. if there's you know if the market is oversaturated with another boutique even though I'm a different kind of boutique I you know people can be Territorial. Yeah. Sure. Well, of course. But I also think that, you know, like it's good to find, like, the people that you're going to connect with easily. Right. And if the market is oversaturated, then, like, why? Why you know? go there? Right. Why go somewhere where there's already the business for somebody else? Exactly. You know, so, um, okay, so before we get into our first break, since we're going to we're going to do it now, um, <laughs> let's just very basic because we're really going to dive into what Garment by Kim is here in the second segment. Um, very basic. What is Garment by Kim? Garment by Kim is young contemporary women's clothing and accessories, uh, and I say it's from your nostalgic daydreams. So it's clothing that reminds you of a certain point in time, which could be a decade, like 70s, 90s, 2000s, 60s, whatever that may be, or it could be something 1800s, 1700s. It could be just an element of an item that when you wear it, it kind of reminds you of that place and you can almost kind of have fun dressing up. Yeah. And you kind of take on this different character for the day or for how many, however many hours you're wearing. Of course. Item. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So we're going to really dig deep into that here in our second segment. We're going to take our first break of this episode. Uh, this is the Greetings from the Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We are here with Kim Cawthorn Gar of Garment by Kim in Morristown, New Jersey. We'll be right back. It is time for today in New Jersey history. John Stewart Pop Corhill was born on April 11th, 1858. Pop began his Major League Baseball career with the Cincinnati Reds in 1883. He also played with the Brooklyn Bridegrooms, Philadelphia Athletics, and Pittsburgh Pirates before retiring in 1892 after being hit in the head by a pitch from Ed Crane. And that is today in New Jersey history. All right, we're back for our second segment of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Ham. We are here in Morristown today with Kim Cawthorn of Garment by Kim. So in the first segment, we kind of learned about your background, kind of what you've been doing since you got involved in fashion and the creative bug and all that kind of stuff, and then eventually starting Garment by Kim, which we gave a very broad definition of what it is. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about like some of the stuff that you offer and all that kind of stuff. But if people are still like not really sure exactly like where they can go to purchase some of these things, where can they go to do that? So. So I have a website. It's www.garmentbykim.com. Um, so you can order directly from there. So I don't always bring everything with me to my in-person events just because it's too much stuff. Yeah. But everything's available on the website, and I offer um, worldwide shipping and also oh. free shipping for um, orders over $75 in the U.S. Okay, cool. So then, like, what... So I know this is going to be a very broad question, and this is just because I'm not, like, the fashion guy in this interview... Um, but like, what are some things that people can like expect to get from, like, if they're going to shop with you, like, why are they shopping with you? So, um, I offer really unique pieces. So, you know, none of these items you're going to find in a department store. I get everything exclusively that's only sold to other boutique owners. Um, and some of these things are actually private label things that I do, but, um, I try to source American made as much as possible. I also source Australian made items, European made items, but 
all the items are ethically made. Everyone gets fair pay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm really big into color. I mean, of course, like you said earlier, black is slimming, which I do agree. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and I do have some black items too, um, more so in like when it's more that time of the season, which sure. would be more like winter, yeah. fall. For the spring and summer, you can expect a lot of color and a lot of whites too. So um, I'll be getting a lot of white things in. So think like bridal stuff, not necessarily a bridal dress, but things that brides may want to wear on their bachelorette party or, you know, to, I mean, I feel like when brides are getting married the whole year before, all they wear is white. So yeah. they need a lot of right. white things <laughs> yeah, to wear. A lot wear. of white things. White things that I own, like, never make it. They're just like, <laughs> I wear them once and then they're ruined because I, you know, get something on them, spill yeah. coffee, spill whatever. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. But sorry to cut you off. That's okay. <laughs> I know I was going to say stains. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, so you can expect a lot of that. You can expect a lot of, like, fun silhouettes. So, and I'm really big into denim. So I love... Of course, you know, this is the famous term, jeans and a cute top. But it's so true yeah. with girls. Like, sometimes we don't know what to wear, which is where, like, really good fitting denim and a nice top come into play. And also, sometimes you don't want to have to think of two things to wear. So a dress is easier or a romper, which I like to get a lot of dresses and rompers in. Okay. Um, all the items, I try to make sure everything is under a hundred dollars. Each piece is under a hundred dollars. So it's affordable and you can still access those kinds of high quality, trendy, fashionable items without having to go to some super high end department store yeah. or specialty store. Right. And one of the things you mentioned too there, um, as we were kind of progressing through that answer was the idea that like each kind of season you have different offerings. Right. Yeah. So that's like obviously important to make sure that your stuff is staying up to, as up to date as possible. Right. Right. So um, now that it's springtime, I'm going to, like I said, have more like dresses and um, lighter denim and some shorts in the summer. I'll definitely have more shorts um, in the winter. I tend to. I mean, this was my first winter doing this, but I had more sweaters, more blouses, like dressier blouses. Um, and then comfy things, too. I mean, like, I'm trying to offer things for when people do want to get dressed up. Yeah. I mean, obviously, post-COVID and even before COVID, you want to be comfortable all the time. Like, yeah. you want to wear loungewear. And I do offer some of that, too. But what I'm trying to mainly focus on is when you do feel like dressing up, you're having fun with it. Right. Um, but one of the things I am going to be getting more of, which I already do have a couple things, um, is active wear. So, like leggings, matching tops with, like, built-in sports bras for the ladies um, and things like that that um, are really fun and colorful and cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, like, you mentioned, I think, in the, the previous answer, kind of, like, like where you get those things. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, are, like, the types of people that you're working with to buy the things that you're going to sell to your clients, like, who are they? Like, where do you go to find those types of people? So they are all wholesale brands. Okay. Um, and some of them I found myself just by, I would go in my closet and I looked at all the items that I've personally purchased from boutiques because I've always been a boutique shopper. I yeah. enjoy going to boutiques. Um, I like how you find really different things. And every time I wear something from another boutique or mine, I get so many compliments as opposed to something I got from, you know, the regular department store. Um, and I started looking in my closet at like the tags in the back and I would just type in whatever the name of the tag was wholesale. And I would try to get in touch with them. And so when you're working with these wholesale brands, you have to prove that you are a business, like yeah. not just anyone can purchase. So you have to provide your LLC proof, your resale certificate. So, you know, it's not like anyone can just go and purchase these things. Like I am a business person. I am paying taxes. I yeah. do have to like file all that stuff. So I have to prove all that, but also, um, from going back to like my past, like I would go to trade shows all the time for my jobs and I soon discovered all these other trade shows that were for wholesale buyers. And so that was one of the things that kind of kickstarted me to start this because I was like, I already have access to all these wholesale trade shows. Yeah. Now it's just navigating them and going to them and building those relationships with their, those wholesalers and seeing those items in person. So like every item is handpicked by me. Yeah. 
That's very cool. Very cool. And it just kind of gives you like like a deeper connection with the stuff that you're selling, I think, right? Because then like people know, like if they trust your style, then they know that you're going to put like the stuff in front of them that they're going to like. Right. Of yeah. course. And I mean, it can't just be all things that I like because a lot of the things I like, sometimes someone else or my sure. client won't wear that. Yeah. So I do oftentimes request feedback from my customers too. And I'll put up like polls on my Instagram page, like, before a little this I, or that type yeah, of thing. Which, yeah, which do you think that... <clears throat> yes, and you have to introduce these things to the client, too, because these are some things that um, I really want to help the girls that shop with me do, is that they might be afraid of, like, some of the trends that are coming up, or they've never seen them before, or they don't know how to wear it. But I'm trying to help them know that they can incorporate these high style, high fashion items or like these things that you only see in Manhattan or you only see them in LA. Like you can have that in your closet too. You can incorporate these pieces too. Like don't be shy yeah. to put yourself out there and try something different. You might like, like it more. Right. Right. Definitely. So we picked a couple, I didn't, you did, um, <laughs> that we wanted to like highlight, I guess, out of the rack behind us. So uh, I think we got like four sets, right? Yeah, so we have some items here. So um, one of these is a... I'm going to turn up your mic real fast. Okay. We're so gonna go here. one of these is a dress I just got in. It's a really cute floral flouncy dress. And what I love about this is you can wear it off the shoulder or you can wear it with the shoulder. So, you know, some people aren't so comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, with a cute little tie back center back closure zipper. So this is great for now bridal shower season yeah. or brunch season and you want to hang out with your girlfriends. Um, this is a top I got in that is so pretty. It's kind of like a bra top, but not. It has these great sleeves, again, off the shoulder or on the shoulder. Another similar style. This one's a wrap. So everything I get to is... Um, is goes through a quality process. So I won't have anything that isn't going to be to my quality standards. Sure. Um, and to fit as well. And then I have a dress here. This is a little bit more sexy. This might be something more daring for someone. Open back. Twirl's really pretty. I love the good uh, good twirl. Good twirl. It's sundress twirl. season. Yeah, right. It's all about the twirl with the sundresses. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, so, and... A lot of these pieces, like, they might come off looking super young, but there are some items that that I have, not necessarily these specific ones, but other items I do carry, like, I like to say it's for the young or for the young at heart because there are things that my mom would wear, and my mom is not sure. 29 like I am, but yeah. it's about your comfortability in wearing the items, and you wear it. Don't let it wear you. Yeah, definitely. So, like, okay, so let's take, you know, one of these tops or whatever – like, how many of these would you have on your site available to purchase? Is it, like, one? Like, if you get this one, it's the only one. It only comes in this size, or they're, like, multiple sizes. How does that work? So everything I carry, I only carry in limited stock. So I might have three smalls, two mediums, one large of something, or I might carry only two smalls, two mediums, two larges, and then when that's done, I'm not going to carry it again unless yeah. I get a lot of requests to have it back in stock. Like, I want these items to also be something of, like, a cult kind of thing. Like, you can only get this at this time. If you like it, it's exclusive. Again, you're not going to see a bunch of other people wearing it. Yeah. So there's not that men, that much availability. Right. The only you want people to be like, oh, where'd you get that? And they're like, right. Garment by Kim. And they're like, right. holy shit, like, where is that? Yeah, you know? like you got to keep your eyes peeled. Exactly. Like if you see something, like you know you're not going to see it everywhere else. Like, you know, if you saw your friend just got this like the other day, like you better go get it. Yeah. <laughs> because right. I'm not going to have it yeah, for yeah. much longer. Yeah. But the only things I have that are one of a kind is I do do specialty requests. So I do um, high-waisted jeans, high-waisted shorts made out of um, vintage denim. So I actually, I started with that in college and I, that was like my first like side hustle. And um, that's when high-waisted shorts became a huge thing. Yeah. And then after a while, I just got too busy. I stopped doing it. But I still, to this day, I mean, that was like eight years ago. People still request that of me all the time. So when I started doing this again, um, or when I started Garment by Kim, rather, I started doing the shorts again. So I'll do specialty requests, stuff like that, or jackets, or like bridal 
ja denim jackets that are white with, you know, Mrs. whatever, wherever you're going. Um, and that is a specialty thing that's going to be one of a kind. And I can do whatever the client wants. So and that's that could custom be stuff that you make. Custom stuff I make. So, and these, th that includes like dyeing, embellishments, um, laces, like names on things. So I do custom things like that. So, but I do offer some one of a kind pieces online. So like, for example, <laughs> <Cut out>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, nothing happens. <laughs> So this is a pair of shorts that I would offer that's one of a kind. So they're on my website. You just have to pick what size you want. Like these are a size eight. And that's another thing. Like I don't just carry tiny sizes. I carry up to like size 12, size 13, which would equate to like a 31. Um, and I'm not a small person either. Like, you know, I'm a more voluptuous person. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why the fit and like. Yeah. Quality is so important to me because for me to find something that fits me in the right places, it's not easy. Sure. Um, so this is an example of something that would be one of a kind. Like I have shorts like these that have rips and don't have rips. Ones with patches, like, you know, Grateful Dead patches, fun stuff like that, and ones that don't. Um, and if you want something custom, you can always request it of me. Um, I have a contact page on my website. And also, if you DM me on Instagram and you want to discuss that too, I can always do stuff like that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And that's one of the things that I think is cool about, like, this whole process is, like, you're kind of, you know, you're putting this stuff out there for people to get. And like we were talking about before, like, you're engaging with the people that buy your stuff because you want to know, like, what they like, what they, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, which I think is cool about the Instagram page because I think, like, a couple weeks ago before, at the time of this recording, you were at that trade show in the city and you, it was just, like, all day. Like, I was, like, clicking through the stories yes, and I was yes. like, well, I'm not going to pick any of these. <laughs> I'm not going to wear any of them. But um, I don't want to skew the numbers. Right. But, uh, but that's what I think is cool is it's just, like, it's more of, like, a, a two-way street almost because like you're trying to like figure this stuff out together and then being you being able to kind of like pick those things and putting them in front of your clients that you want them to you know like and enjoy and have yeah. fun wearing like you said I mean I try to be very engaging with my customers like I want it to be like you're shopping with me as your friend I mean and a lot of the people who do shop with me they've become friendly with me yeah. and that's very rewarding too, and that's one of the things that I missed about working in retail, even though retail is so exhausting. See, it's probably like the physically most exhausting job I ever had, even more exhausting than when I was schlepping in the city, okay? <laughs> it is exhausting, but <laughs> it's so rewarding in yeah. like the social aspect, like getting to style someone, understanding what they like and don't like. Like sometimes I get things in and I like, will message one of the people that have purchased something from me before and be like, oh, I got something and I think you're really going to like it and I don't have that much. So I'm just letting you know, no pressure, because I don't like to pressure people either. You know, I don't want to be that person who's on top of someone just being like a salesperson to yeah, them. Yeah, sure. But um, I try to cater to the girls in, and women in my life in that regard. Right. Yeah. No, I love that. Awesome. Do we hit everything with Garmin by Kim? I think so, right? I think so. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so we're going to take our <laughs> second break of this episode. Uh, that was great. Learned a whole lot of stuff about what you do because I didn't really know. I mean, like I see this stuff on Instagram and, and all that kind of stuff, and obviously I did my homework before, but then to kind of like hear like everything that goes into putting this stuff out there is really cool. So uh, we're going to take our second break, last break of this episode. This is the Greetings from the Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We are here in Morristown with Kim Cawthorn of Garment by Kim. We'll be right back. It is time for your New Jersey fun fact of the day. Did you know that the highest elevation along the entire East Coast from Maine to Florida is in Highlands, New Jersey? And that is your New Jersey fun fact of the day. All right, we're back for our last segment of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Cam. As always, we are here in Morristown with Kim Cawthorn of Garment by Kim. So, Kim, in the first segment, we kind of learned about your background in fashion and all the stuff that you were doing. Second segment, we got, like, a great explanation of what Garment by Kim is, what you do. We checked out some uh, offerings that you have that people can go check out on the website. Um, but in our last segment, we always like to tie it back into community in some way. So one of the things that I thought was interesting about uh, some of the answers you were given in the first and second segments were the pop-ups that you do. So like working with a lot of local businesses, getting out there, kind of like collaborating with them. So maybe take me through like that whole, like what you do with those and like why those are important to help kind of propel everyone. Right. So I do a lot of pop-ups. 
all of them are in New Jersey. Um, they're all smaller businesses. So I do a lot of salons. I've done a like spray tan spot. I've worked with um, a local aesthetics salon that does like Botox and stuff like that. Um, and I've worked with like gyms, like a, I've worked with Cycle Bar in Livingston. Um, I work with the Milburn Short Hills Chamber of Commerce doing like community events and stuff like that. And what's great fun about those events is you get to see the community um, and find new clients, new clientele. Um, you make a lot of like good networking co connections yeah. um, and you meet a lot of other cool small business owners as well. Like it's very much like a long chain reaction of meeting people and through doing my first like three events I ever did, I was so nervous and I didn't even have that many items. I probably had like four items on yeah. the rack. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to sell? Just four things. But you know, you just put yourself out there. Like yeah. the worst thing is not even bothering. Right. Um, but from even like those first three events I did, I met a woman who makes candles. Shout out to Lucky's Charms of Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> she told me about all these other events and places I could try to do pop-ups. And that propelled me even more. And I met so many other really cool, like, people that make earrings, people that make, like, medicated goodies and, like, baked goods. Um, and, you know, people that make, like, handmade soaps and stuff like that. And those are all good things to know, too, because, you know... When I'm purchasing an item from someone, I have, like, a newfound, even higher appreciation sure. to, like, purchase something from one of these small business owners. And op honestly, like, when I get a gift from someone and it's something, like, specialty like that, I, like, cherish it even more because it's like, oh, like, it was handmade or, yeah. you know, it's this specialty item. Like, that's so cool. Yeah, because you can appreciate, like, the time and effort that it goes into right. like, doing all these things and, like, you know, not only making the stuff but selling it and getting it out there and doing the stuff like you're doing, which I think is really cool. Um, talk to me also about like you know maybe like the community of like the maybe the fashion community is that like a collaborative community is it like more not collaborative um, I'm just, I, I don't even know if you were prepared for that question I just it literally be. popped into my brain now and I was like maybe I'll ask uh well I am part of like a big boutique community that's nationwide um and their whole theme is community over competition and being part of that is really encouraging um I just I joined it just to have a little bit more know-how and um, more navigation in what not to do and to do sure. um, in that world. And I actually got involved with that community when I went to Atlanta last year for a trade show there. Um, but I think that nationwide, the community's a little more friendly than, like, New Jersey, New York, honestly. And that's I think that's just because, you know, you know how New Jersey people are. Yeah. We can have an attitude. And I can be like that, too. I'm not going to lie. But um, everything is always a competition. But I think it's a good thing that it's like that sometimes because yeah. it propels you to kind of have this, like, competitive edge. Right. Um, or pushes, like, the creativity and different things like yeah. you need to do to stay – relevant, I guess. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. I think that's good. But that's what kind of drives everything forward. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like finding like people, girls I see on Instagram that are like micro influencers and stuff like that. I don't see any competition with them and they always want to be very much involved. And that's so like, I'll, I will receive that and I am <laughs> open to that. <laughs> right. But um, in terms of other boutiques, I'll be honest, I can't say I've actually interacted with that many other boutique owners in New Jersey. Um, I have boutiques that I like in New Jersey, but I haven't really interacted with them much. So I can't really say so well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was just maybe talking about like as a whole, but that was a great answer. You know, I mean, I think the creativity side of it is what this whole industry is built on. Mm -hmm. And I think like the competition kind of pushes everyone to see what else they can do differently. Like you were talking right. about full circle back to centenary when you were like, Oh, you can't do this. Can't do this. Right. And now it's like, well, you have to do these things that are different to kind of get, you know, out in front of the right types of people. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, talk to me about like maybe looking into the future, you know? So looking at like, you want to open a brick and mortar, you want to do those kinds of mm -hmm. things. Like, 
how's that going? Like, are you, is that something you definitely want to do? Like, is the mobile thing still something that like is just working for you and you're just going to keep rolling mobile? So I do really very much so want to open a brick and mortar. That's always been the plan. And like, it wouldn't just have clothing in it. And I don't want to reveal all my secrets. Oh no, yeah, because don't, don't show all your cards. Yeah. Don't want anyone to steal my ideas, but <laughs> brick and mortar is definitely what I want to do when I don't have a set date. I mean, I'd rather sooner rather than later. Sure. But I also have a lot of personal goals I want to get to, too. Um, and so I'd say hopefully, actually definitely, before three years is when I want to open a physical brick and mortar. Um, I mean, right now I'm a one-woman show. I don't have anyone that helps me. I mean, I would love to, like, teach someone and have an assistant or, like, an intern of some sorts that wants to really learn because yeah. I think that I have a lot to offer, like like I was saying before, in terms of, like, learning the ropes and everything and simplifying things for them. Yeah. Um, and for when they get an even bigger internship or something like that. But um, once I would have a brick and mortar, I would have to have a bigger team. I mean, this is extremely overwhelming as it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a one man show, you could imagine that it's also pretty overwhelming at some points. Yes. And I don't have a place to go. I just drive around. <laughs> We're in your building right now, and I'm doing an episode, and then I'm yeah. gonna have to drive back to my house, and then you know put it all together. So yeah. I totally get that for sure. I mean, doing the pop ups is good right now because it's when I have the time for it at yeah. this point, and also like I was saying. Um, I don't even really know where exactly I would want to have a store yet. Finding the right community and space for me is also the key part. And like with this climate, not like actual climate, but climate like economically of what's going on, that also has a lot to do with it too. Sure. So figuring out the right economic climate and the right community for me is key. But the pop-ups are so good for that and finding the right space. Because I've done pop-ups in certain places where I'm like, this wouldn't be the right spot to yeah. do, have a store, right. you know? And then there's places that I've been in and I'm like, I could totally see a store for myself being here. Yeah, very cool, very cool. All right, so if people are listening to this episode and they want to, like, learn more or go buy something or whatever, uh, where can they go to do those things? So you can shop directly on my website, www.garmentbykim.com. Um, and garment is spelled G-A-R-M-I-N-T. It's kind of a play on words. I didn't misspell it on purpose. <laughs> or I did misspell it on purpose, rather. I did. Um, <laughs> so garmentbykim.com. Um, and then you can shop directly on there. And then also uh, there's an about me. There's an about the boutique. There's also a place that you can request to have your own private shopping party. And I do, if I... I'm going to be hosted by you at your home. I do offer 10% of all the sales that are made from that shopping party for you to use in store credit. Oh, cool. So I will come to you. Um, and I also have a tab where you can see where my next pop-up is going to be. If you go to the events calendar, I post everything there. Awesome. And then like the Instagram is also Garment by Kim, right? Yeah. So the Instagram is Garment by Kim, same spelling, G-A-R-M-I-N-T by Kim. And then also the Facebook. So those are the three places that you can find everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, maybe this is a hard question to answer, but are there like generally, I, mean, I know it's the seasons, but generally times of year when maybe like stuff gets updated like the like with the so stock I of what update, you have in. I update all the items like every sometimes it's every week sometimes okay. it's every two weeks but I'm always getting new things in and updating things got it so it's not like beginning of spring you have all your stuff and by the end of the spring you're out and then you start again in the summer no it's kind of like a progressive type thing no and as things sell out as I sell out of a certain style I will if I'm getting a lot of requests for that style that they want that people want it back I will reorder it but a lot of the times I don't reorder things I'll just get newer things different yeah, things sure yeah keeping up with the trends of course yes got to keep up with you got to keep up with the trends got to keep up with it definitely so um awesome so I will make sure that I put garmentbykim.com in the show notes along with garment by Kim the Instagram handle and the Facebook page I'll put that in there too um Kim thank you so much for doing this with us today this is your first podcast experience yes. I think you did I think you crushed it oh thank you yeah no problem um <laughs> It was fantastic. So uh, thank you again for coming on with us. Um, thank and, you. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody else, 
else. This has been the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Cam. We were here in Morristown, New Jersey, with Kim Cawthorn of Garden by Kim in, in Morristown. I just said that. Uh, <laughs> thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time. Sapphire. Crowd of lights on